Wow, last night's debate, it was interesting to say the least. And we've got the breakdown coming up. And the director of national intelligence says Hillary Clinton approved the plan to tie Trump to the Russian hacking of the DNC. We've got that and much, much more coming up and it starts right now. It's about that time. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I'm Hillary Kennedy and Sarah Gonzalez was nice enough to let me fill in for her while she is on maternity leave enjoying her sweet baby boy. But we do have an amazing round table for you today. Eric July is back, the host of For Canon's Sake and our Blaze TV contributor. Good to have you here. Well, thank you, thank you. And then Rob Eno, our Blaze TV media critic. Always good to see you too. Hey, thanks for having me on. So we have a lot of clips from the debate last night because that's what's what everybody's talking about at every water cooler or at home on your Zoom calls around the country. But before we get into the clips, I just want to ask both of you what your reactions are to last night's debate. Because I think we knew it was going to be some fireworks, but I don't know if we expected it to be quite that chaotic. Yeah, I mean, I, it, was, it went about as I expected. Sometimes we speak in more hyperbolic terms and we act as if, you know, when I, when I joke around and I say, oh, he might swing on... Trump. I'm generally just kind of like, oh, just, yeah, you know, he, he gets riled up. But there were instances where I thought he may was going to walk over there and try to <laughs> and try to box him, uh, especially after he said the whole shut up. Then will you shut up, man? <laughs> like that. I thought it was going to go there, but it went about as expected. Uh, 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 and I guess you can say that unfortunate That's fortunate for me. It's fortunate because it was entertainment, but I can only stand it for so for so long before I was like, yeah, man, uh, I got to I got to check out. It did get off slow. I mean, the, the first like like 20 minutes of it, I thought I was like going to pass out and wouldn't need, you know, a sleeping pill or trazodone <laughs> last night. But it picked up and, and, you know, Trump's got this thing where he, I mean, the, the talk about Joe Biden needing Adderall to stay awake. I mean, tr Trump has ADD. I mean, let's just, I mean, yeah, I have ADD. Right? Trump, Trump has ADD. He mm -hmm. gets very impatient. He needs to talk. He's the alpha guy in the room, you know, very successful. He's always the one setting the agenda when he can't do that. He gets up. I mean, he did it through the debates in 2016. He did it last night. Um, there were a few points where if he would have just shut up, Joe Biden would have hung himself, mm. you know, and Trump just kept talking over him and talking over him. And we'll get into, you know, the specifics. Um, my, my takeaway from this debate is nobody changed their mind. There is not one person in the United States of America that watched that debate and changed their mind. If you hated Donald Trump, you think he's more evil. If you love Donald Trump, you think he didn't have a good debate night, but you're not going to not vote for him because you know that the alternative is a radical socialist agenda that's going to destroy the country. So, I mean, th those are your two extremes, and I don't think anybody changed their mind. What do you think, Eric? Do you think anybody's mind was changed? No, nah, no, nah, I think it was, uh, depending on what candidate you support, you probably thought he won the debate. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, so did you think there was a clear winner? I mean, did you look at it and go, ah, oh, yes, Donald Trump, or okay, Joe Biden, he actually did better than expected? I think I have to look at it in terms of, like, what I went in as an expectation as far as determining win or losses. And Trump did essentially what I thought he was going to do. I did not think Biden was going to last as long as he was able to last without maybe passing out or maybe even wanting to fight Donald Trump. But he did, to, to I guess, his credit. Uh, so it, it's hard to determine a winner when that was it was poorly moderated, there, it, it was obviously unfair. You had a lot of instances where Trump was, you know, <laughs> debating the moderator uh, <laughs> in a lot of instances. So it was very difficult to determine who a winner was because it wasn't set in like, I guess, how you would determine a clear winner in a usual debate. Let's say if it was like Oxford style or some right. uh, something like that. I saw a poll, I think it was a poll with CBS, which, you know, whatever you think about that, but they said 69% of all people said they were just annoyed. I mean, they were just annoyed mm. watching it. It wasn't that they found it necessarily entertaining or informative. They just thought it was annoying, which I thought was funny. All right, so let's talk about President Trump. He was ripping Joe Biden for refusing to answer his court packing question, and we've got a clip of it. Let's take a listen. Vote now. Are you gonna pack the Make court? sure you, in fact, let people know he doesn't you're want to a senator. The I'm not going to answer the question. Why because, would you answer that question? Because the you question put a is, lot of the new question Supreme is, Court is the radical question, left. Will you who shut is up, your, man? Listen, who is on your list, Joe? This Who's is on your so list? right, gentlemen. This is, I think this we've is ended so this. He's going to pack the court. We have end, no, no, not going to give a list. We have ended this segment. We're going to move on to the second segment. That was really a pr productive segment, wasn't it? Keep yapping, man. The people understand you. <laughs> they 47 years, you've done nothing. 
Oh, man. All right. So, Rob, why do you think Biden is refusing to say whether or not he will pack the court? Because he's going to pack the court. I mean, he's refusing to say that he's going to pack the court because he's going to fundamentally change the nation and the way it's governed. Um, you know, they, they, they think the court is the ending. They can't win elections. Or when they do win elections, they can't get their agenda passed. So they rely on the court to do it. And they've figured it out, right? You know, at, at Conservative Review, he's now at the blaze. Daniel Horowitz, who's my old colleague at Conservative Review, he's been big on the court and how how judicial review actually isn't what they originally wanted to have mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. in the Constitution. And you saw a guy um, at the Atlantic last week was like, well, you know, maybe we've been relying too much on the court to fix things. And maybe we should get rid of this judicial review. And we all that, you know, the still worker that used to work in conservative review all went, Daniel, did you see this? Like, like literally he's making Daniel Horowitz's argument. You know, they, they're there to interpret the law as written, which is what Amy Coney Barrett said that she does. And, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, what um, Chief Justice Roberts did when he, you know, kept Obamacare. Mm -hmm. So. I, I think the reason that he doesn't answer the question is because he's going to pack the court. They'll be like, so what I see happening is, you know, Biden wins. There's like 20 people on the Supreme Court. Then the next Republican wins and there's like 40. Yeah. And then we're going to start having Supreme Court sessions in the Verizon Center in downtown. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that's pretty much what it is. Of course, that, those aren't his intentions. I think that's how a lot of Democrats are operating right now. They figured that out. It's like, OK, we utilize this. And in the event that we don't have the power that we want to, let's say, have, we make the adjustments that we can make. Though, of course, if the if it was the shoe was on the other foot, they would be irate and they would say this is just a violation of every um, rule that there is. So of course that's their intention and Biden he did a lot of that uh, throughout the entire debate was he, he speaks just like a lot of his colleagues and he's sort of it's like not even platitudes it's like these very vague and and generic sort sort of way uh, like talking points and he has to hammer those home it's almost as if he is reading from a script and if he if he has to deviate from it he he's not prepared to do that well, so that brings up a good question he knew this was going to come up so why do you think he didn't have a better answer prepared for this? He thought he did. No, no, no. His answer was, I'm not going to do it because what matters is letting the American people decide. That, that was his rehearsed answer. Right. The American people decided six years ago and two years ago. And just like Donald Trump said, just like Obama said, you have a four year term. I am the president for four years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the thing in 2016 with Merrick Garland, if the Senate doesn't want to take up a nomination, there is nothing in the Constitution that says they need to take up a nomination. If the Senate wants to take up a, a nomination, they can take up a nomination. It is the prerogative of the Senate and the senators. They decided in 2016 they didn't want to. They're going to decide in 2020 that they do. I mean, it's completely constitutional. They have no power. And Biden was trying to obfuscate to the American people that a presidential term only lasts three years and two months. Right. He did that a lot, where he spoke directly to the camera. You know, I noticed he, he did that consistently the whole night through. It was really interesting. That was kind of his bit. Let's get into uh, him descending into high school fight mode uh, with Trump. Uh, he calls him a couple days. We've got a, a good clip of this. Let's take a listen. You get the final word, Mr. Well, it's hard to get any word in with this clown. Excuse me. This. Hey, hey this let me person. just say to you. No, no, no. Man, so this wasn't really stately fashion, was it? Uh, he called Trump buddy. He said this man doesn't know what he's talking about. He challenged him to keep yapping. Uh, at one point, uh, he asked Fox News moderator Chris Wallace and the socially distanced audience, folks, do you have any idea what this clown is doing? He also said, you know, will you shut up, man? I don't know. Uh, what are your thoughts on Biden's name calling? Because I think a lot of people were surprised that he got as emotionally charged as well, he did. Well, that's the one, I guess, advantage of uh, tr Trump. Trump's not a good debater. I don't care what anybody says. I don't think he's a good debater. But he will drag you in the mud with him. Um, and he will go there. That's his one advantage in that he will bring you to his particular arena. And if you lose your cool, which Biden is doesn't seem to really have it all there and he doesn't have that capacity to be able to do that, he'll have you doing things that are considered out of line. You may sp expect something like that out of Trump, but you generally don't expect that maybe out of his uh, opposition. But that's what Trump does. And he does it very well in which he almost riles people up to the point to where they do lose their cool and they go go that he tried to correct himself real quick, like clown. Oh, I mean, person like. <laughs> You know, that, that's that's what Trump does. He's not the best debater. Like you mentioned, he had a lot of opportunities to let 
Biden hang himself right. by just answering the question. And Trump's not he's not built for that. He has to speak over you. He has to k- kind of command the room. And in doing so, it throws the others off his cool. And that's what he does uh, very well. It's not necessarily a good debate tactic as, as far as winning a debate. But that's what he did. He dragged him in the mud with him. Rob, did you think he would hold back a little bit more than he did? No, I mean, Bi- Biden and Trump are both products of blue collar ethnic neighborhoods in the yep. Northeast. That's how I'm a product of a blue collar <laughs> ethnic neighborhood in the Northeast. And if I wasn't holding myself, there would be like 75 F bombs <laughs> in like the half an hour that we're talking, right? Because, That's the because, because we use it because we use them as an interjection, right? I right. mean, it's like, yeah. it's an interjection. That's why Trump talks like he does. That's why Biden talks like, we, you saw the real Joe Biden, the real True. Joe Biden. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Trump brought out the real Joe Biden, not the polished 47 year old or 47 year Washington creature. Right. So no, I wasn't that surprise. Well, so the Biden campaign, they, boy, they capitalized on that moment where he told him to shut up. They have been selling shut up man shirts after the debate. Um, so the shirt does say, will you shut up, man? Uh, let's see, they're uh, $30 to $33. And boy, they got these up fast. Um, selling t-shirts with a memorable line from a debate. It was a move used by Biden's running mate, uh, Senator Kamala Harris, during the Democratic primary. Um, after she had a confrontation with the former vice president. So do you think it's interesting that the Biden campaign is monetizing the very unpresidential moment rather than trying to hide this and bury it? Yeah, no, that's kind of the the hip thing to do. I mean, unfortunately, lot, not unfortunately I do the same thing uh, with my own personal content <laughs> and having like weekly merchandise and stuff like that based off of some one line or something that I said. I think that's just the direction that people are going when it comes to monetizing things because of merchandise is, is, is essentially where it's at. So I'm not necessarily surprised. I don't think that that was his idea, of course, to do that. I think that's just, you know, younger folk being involved in his campaign saying, you know what, this would be a cool thing to do. But, you know, yeah, I mean, they that's how they're fundraising these days, and um, they're just capitalizing. Yeah, I mean, everybody does it, right? The, the NRSC did a notorious ACB t-shirt, which we also have at the Blaze Media Shop. You know, plug for the Blaze Media Shop. You go to the Blaze Media Shop, you can get a notorious ACB t-shirt right now. Love it. Um, but... Yeah, it's 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 what people do. Yeah. It's how it's how the, the the game is played. It's it's how it's played. I mean, I what, one of the things I do here is I help do some of the email stuff, and you know, you see these these, and I watch email because I do it, and you see these things that come from the Trump campaign, and I've got some that come from like the Congressional Black Caucus pack. You look at them all; they're all exactly the same. I mean, everybody does the same thing. It's like they test stuff in an industry, and what works, they do. Yeah. Might end up being like a a cool vintage item to have later on down the road to commemorate this moment. (laughs) All right, so uh, one more thing I want to get to before we go to break. Trump said, you know, don't ever use the phrase smart with me. And this was also just what a lot of people considered a very low moment. Let's take a listen. He panicked or he just looked at the stock market. One of the two, because guess what? A lot of people died and a lot more are going to die unless he gets a lot smarter, a lot quicker. Mr. President, did you use the word smart? Uh, so you said you went to Delaware State, but you forgot the name of your college. You didn't go to Delaware State. You graduated either the lowest or almost the lowest in your class. Don't ever use the word smart with me. Don't ever use that word. Oh, give me a break. Because you know what? There's nothing smart about you, Joe. 47 years, you've done nothing. Let's have- <laughs> it's kind of cringeworthy. What are your thoughts on the insult from Trump? I absolutely loved it. I love that he went right at him. No, I, I did because, you know, these people in Washington think that they're the smartest people in the room, that they've been there the whole time. They're surrounded by yes men, yep. by people that just tell them how great they are. And they happen to win an election. I mean, that, that, that's what they did. And I absolutely loved it. Like, you know, I watched a different world when like the 90s and there was like, you know, the one white person that went to the historically black college and university. I don't think that Joe Biden was going to historically black college and university in the height of the civil rights era. I just don't think that that was like something that somebody would have done. And, you know, people, the media attacks Trump for his malapropping and for his saying stuff like out of tune and like, you know, we'll get to one of the things that he said last night where he doesn't completely say the full thing. And you know that that's not exactly like he means like the the whole thing with the um, injecting the injecting the bleach. He he never said inject bleach. He said they inject you with a disinfectant. And in fact, there's a UV like disinfectant that they tried to use. Like somebody probably told him about it. He told and they don't. But nobody ever calls Joe Biden on that. Nobody ever called Barack Obama in the mainstream media for saying there were 57 states. 
but they call, you know, George Bush, they call Dan Quayle for spelling potato with an O-E because the card that he was reading had it spelt with an O-E. Mm -hmm. So he was going off of, you know, he was like, I, I can't tell the teacher she's wrong. I know I'm going to be crazy. Like, that was like the whole thing. And it, it's just amazing to me. I absolutely loved it. He's not the only one that was at the bottom of his class. You know, there's a bunch, a bunch of the Kennedys never passed their, their bar exams on the first, second, third, fourth try. Um, John Kerry wasn't exactly the smartest person on the face of the earth. You know, there's a ton of people that are like that, and they think that they're all that because they've been in Washington for 47 years. Right. Loved it. Eric? Yeah, no, he's right. I mean, that's what Trump, sh I, I feel like, should have more so been doing the entire debate because there's a lot of, I don't want to call it bait, but there's a lot of what Joe Biden says that is easily, easily able to counter by just using what he has said or his own personal accomplishments or non-accomplishments. And, and highlighting that to me is an easy win and you can allow him to hang himself. It's an easy thing to do to just sit up here and say, all right, he, was, he says this and you say, well, you know, you want to talk about smart, you know, you do this, this, this is actually um, how you've been operating for the last 47 years or what have you. You've got nothing done, yet you, you dare to use terms like that in reference to me. So that's what I feel like he should have been doing for the majority of the of the debate and, and sticking, though, to those topics as they moved move from topic to topic. But like I said, I don't, I don't think that's the biggest focus of, of Trump. And I don't know if anybody could ever reel him in to ever get him to do that because that's not how he's wired to yeah. do. I think what you saw is how, how Trump's wired to handle the debate, how he's wired to handle discussions, definitely group discussions that, are, that you know, it's not just him talking at you, but it's a lot. He, he has to be the one that's commanding the room and that's how he operates. A hundred percent. Totally agree. Well, we're going to get to Chris Wallace too coming up, but first I want to thank our sponsor, Omega XL. So whether it's your back, your neck, your knees, your shoulder pain, the underlying cause, it's likely inflammation, and you have to defeat inflammation or it can cause permanent damage. Backed by 35 years of clinical research, Omega XL attacks the inflammation that's causing pain. It is brilliant. Pain relievers and the topical rubs, they just mask the problem, but Omega XL neutralizes the inflammation that causes painful, stiff joints and muscles. A doctor who works with Omega XL said, with my prescription pad, I can't write anything that comes close to doing what Omega XL does. So if you're suffering with aches and pains and stiffness, aren't we all, you need to try Omega XL. So let's get you started. Order Omega XL now and get a second bottle free. Just visit OmegaXL.com slash news. That's OmegaXL.com slash news or call 800-844-4888. 800-844-4888. We'll be back in a minute. So one of the biggest stories to come out of last night's debate was Chris Wallace and how he handled moderating it. Uh, he's faced some intense backlash, including from his own colleagues, over bias during the debate. I want to take a look at a clip so you can see for yourself and listen. That's the end of the didn't segment. We're, mov money. we're moving on. Was, it didn't take them. Well, Vice President, I, 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 no. Can I be honest? It's a very important try to question. Be honest. No, I, he I, stood I, up. No, he I, stood I, up. The answer to the question is no. Ukraine. No, I, sir. With a billion sir, dollars, if you get rid of this, absolutely you know what? You're, wait, not stop. true. You're, you're doing it. You're going to have tape. true, gentlemen. Now, if you don't know much about uh, Chris Wallace, he's a Fox News host. He's a registered Democrat. People are saying that this was a lot of bias from him in the debate in favor of Joe Biden and against Republican President Donald Trump. Um, it seemed like he appeared to let Biden interrupt Trump, but then would jump in to interrupt Trump whenever Trump would talk over Biden. Um, we've got one more clip where Wallace tells Trump to follow the rules. Let's take a listen to that. Mr. President, your campaign agreed to both sides would get two minute answers uninterrupted. Well, your, your side agreed to it. And why don't you observe what your campaign agreed to as a ground rule, okay, sir? He never keeps his word. Can you add no, back, no, 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 I'm not asking. That was a rhetorical only... question. Can you Go ahead, back... sir. So, of course, the first obvious question, how do you think Chris Wallace did? Well, I mean... It... In some cases, of course, I want to criticize them for it did seem like an apparent bias when you compare the the two candidates and how we hand, handle them both. In the same respects, I don't know if aside from having a mute button for <laughs> both of them, if anybody for that matter, if they came out like that, would have been able to get that on the rails. Trump is who he is, right? 
and he's going to act how it was. And you can see how like, Trump, for the better part of, of, of this debate, he had no desire. He didn't care about it. He's like, yeah, I know you're trying to interrupt me, but no, wait, hold on. I'm going to say what I got got to say, no matter if I have two minutes or he was supposed to go two minutes uninterrupted. So I want to be fair to Chris Wallace. Yes, there did seem to be an inherent bias. I know, I know Trump pointed that out initially. Or he was like, oh, it's now I guess I'm debating you and not him, which I expected to do that. But to be fair to him, I don't know if, again, unless you have a mute button, how in the world do you even get that in, under control to where you do give people two minutes un, uninterrupted or something like that? If that's how you're trying to handle the debate, handle the debate. I think it more so speaks to the personality of the guys that we're dealing with. It isn't just Trump. Biden did the same uh, similar thing. Uh, maybe not as often, but he, 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 he Biden is like you mentioned. He, we kind of saw more of the real Biden. It was more mm. of a big conversation as opposed to a, a more de a debate. So while he was clearly biased in the same respects, I don't know if there's anybody on the planet who would have been if they were coming out like that first debate would have been able to keep that on the rails all right rob you're you are a critic so no, you're you looking was, critically with you know in these it, situations it, his questions what did you were think? completely biased um you know you had yesterday and we're going to get to it a little bit later in a later segment you had that hillary clinton approved the entire russiagate hoax never got answered um you let joe biden unquestioned say that the 3.5 million dollars that the Senate Intelligence Committee or whichever Senate committee looked into that actually had the wire transfers to the company that Hunter Biden founded with John Kerry's stepson. Mm -hmm. like, like literally had those wire transfers. So there is $3.5 million going into a company that Hunter Biden was the founder of and is for all intents and purposes that everybody knows still involved in. Why didn't you say no, he got fired from that company, he's no longer with that company. But they have it. For him to just get up there and say, no, 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 no. Let me tell you something that's different. And, and Trump tried to say it um, during the debate. The difference between the Trump family and the Biden family is the Trump family made their money in the private sector. Mm -hmm. The Biden family made their money because they're corrupt politicians like just about every single other one of them across this country from dog catcher to the normal president of the United States traded on favors. And it's not just... Hunter, it's Hunter's uncle, Joe Biden's brother. We have a whole thing at Blaze TV called Riding the Dragon. If you want to see how bad the Biden family is tied up with China, you know, they said that Trump was Putin's preferred candidate. Joe Biden is the wholly owned subsidiary of the Chinese Communist Party. If you watch this Riding the Dragon documentary that we have on Blaze TV. And you can watch it on YouTube as well. It was pretty incredible the yeah. way. I mean, again, you do have to feel for, for Chris Wallace because it, it was very hard. I mean, he was just getting railroaded. But yeah. his bias was definitely showing. There was mm -hmm. no mistaking that. Um, also, Joe Biden, he invoked the very fine people hoax from Charlottesville riots uh, in the debate with President Trump. And uh, we, have, we have a clip of that as well. Vice President Biden, you say that President Trump's response to the violence in Charlottesville three years ago when he talked about very fine people on both sides was what directly led you to launch this run for president. Oh, yeah, sure. It is true. The reason I got in the race is when those people, close your eyes, remember what those people look like coming out of the fields carrying torches, their veins bulging, spewing, just spewing anti-Semitic bile and accompanied by the Ku Klux Klan. A young woman got killed. And they asked the president what he thought. He said there were very fine people on both sides. No president's ever finish said anything statement. like that. Finish it, the it, it is. So right there at the end, you hear Trump saying, finish the statement, finish the statement, uh, presumably in reference to his complete remarks to the media when he specifically condemned neo-Nazis and white supremacists. But, of course, moderator Chris Wallace who was contentious with Trump all night, he moved things along and he didn't correct Biden, do you think the left is overreacting about Trump for not clear, you know, not clearly condemning white supremacy, even though most of us know he's done that many, many times over? Yeah, no, that's the the that's what they want to drag you in to do. I mean, we all deal with that if you're not a leftist and you're on the Internet. Well, these weirdos come by and they constantly demand that you denounce on the spot what it is that they want you to denounce. I, I handle that. I've dealt with that. People that know me and follow me on social media know that that's what I deal with as well. 
I can have full long form videos of me condemning Nazism, for example, and they are so hell bent because that's the only narrative that they have to go off of. They say that you're a sympathizer or something of that nature. We know. And I'm not a Trump guy. I am. I, I'm not a fan of either of them, but I don't think he's a white supremacist. And he has been fairly open with saying that he condemns it. We have multiple quotes of him doing exactly that. Why it keeps being brought up, and this is what the internet unfortunately is talking about right now. Well, he had his opportunity to, 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 to condemn it, and, and, and he didn't, as if he hadn't already. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't have mattered if he did. That's the angle that they have been trying to paint since forever. So they were gonna paint that regardless that was all they were ever going to do so i'm over that i've been over that like these people demanding that you pledge allegiance to whatever cause it is that they do because they act as if they see a white supremacist or clansmen around every single corner um and, and like uh, no rational person would be fond of that we may not dramatize it as, as like like a lot of them do it, but we're not. We, we don't. Nobody can like it, everybody condemns that. We know that it's a bad thing. It's like going out and saying, "Oh, racism's bad." Okay, we all agree that racism's bad. We don't have to con continue to con remind you of it just because you want to paint that particular narrative. Right. He can only say it so many times, over and over and yeah. over, and that no one's ever going to be satisfied. No, no. All right, so we've got more to come, but first we want to thank our sponsor, Rough Greens. You know, the dogs have spoken. Well, not literally, but it's pretty evident by the way that they eat their food when it's got rough greens on it because they're a happy, happy bunch. I know my chihuahuas are. So if you're a dog owner, you know that loving your dog, it's only a part of the responsibility you have as his owner. You also have to take good care of him and make sure that you do everything you can to promote a healthy and happy life for him. And that's why I love Rough Greens. Rough Greens isn't a dog food, it's a supplement that you put on your dog's food. And it contains all those nutrients that your dog needs, but they get cooked out of the, the kibble food when it's being made. The probiotics, the antioxidants, the vitamins, the minerals, the omega oils, these are just some of the things that your dog needs to live a healthier lifestyle. And they're all things that are in Rough Greens. So you can give your dog the Rough Greens 14 day jumpstart bag today for just $14.95 and see the difference in your dog in 14 days or less. Just go to roughgreens.com slash blaze. That's ruffgreens.com slash blaze. We'll be back in a minute. All right, so we're back. Before we move on to something else, I, I just want to touch on another clip that we have where Chris Wallace asked Trump to denounce white supremacists. Let's take a listen to this. You have repeatedly well, criticized. Wait, I have to answer his statement. No, I, you have his repeatedly. Statement. Wait, you have just repeat, no, second. you've been talking. You made a forth. statement. I'm asking you. I would love to end it. I would love to end it. You know, if you want to switch seats, we, we could very quickly. We can do that. But I'm, I'm sending no, the I, National I, Guard. It would be over. There'd be no problem. Okay. But Good. they don't want to accept the National Guard. You have repeatedly we, criticized the the vice president for not specifically calling out Antifa and other left-wing extremist groups. But are you willing tonight? to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared willing to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what are you, what are you, you, look, what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacist and white like me to condemn? White Proud supremacist. Boys. So, Rob, you and I were talking about this before the show. Do you have a lot of thoughts about this moment? Yeah. So the, the first thing is he said, sure, right in the beginning. Will you denounce white supremacists? The first answer Donald Trump gave was sure. Chris Wallace was too absorbed in himself to even hear the answer. I mean, we just heard it. And then they, they, they criticized him for the Proud Boys thing. You just heard Joe Biden say Proud Boys first. Mm -hmm. And you heard Chris Wallace use the word stand down. So stand down, stand back. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. So all of these things got put into his mind. But what, what I want to talk about is the media's complete irresponsibility with the white supremacist thing. Um, so Kyle Rittenhouse, right? His lawyer is Nick Salmon's lawyer, who was Eric Jewell's lawyer, um, who gets people money <laughs> for being defamed, right? It's pretty much that. Mm -hmm. If you look at what Joe Biden tweeted out today, now it's probably somebody on his campaign. Joe Biden tweeted out a picture of Kyle Rittenhouse with the words, there's no other way to put it, the President of the United States refused to disavow white supremacists on the debate stage last night. Kyle Rittenhouse is not a white supremacist. Kyle Rittenhouse was a, a, a lifeguard. 
who happened to be there, some people asked him to go help because he knows how to handle a gun, to go help protect a car dealership that got burned the night before. He was helping people, putting out fires. Somebody went at him and shot him first, and he returned fire. They, Lynn Wood has a video that shows all of this happening, right? So Lynn Woods said, I have done a formal demand for public retraction is being prepared for the Biden-Harris campaign on behalf of Kyle Rittenhouse. I also hereby demand that Joe Biden immediately retract his false accusation that Kyle is a white supremacist and militia member responsible for violence in Kenosha. He's none of those things. He wasn't even dressed up like a militia dude. He like had like on a pair of like, had a t-shirt and like a pair of like shorts, like he was right. coming from whatever. And then he went on to say, this is Lynn Wood, who was again, Nick Salmon's lawyer and um, Richard Jewell, who was accused of the Atlanta bombing. Mm -hmm. I enjoy conversations on Twitter. I get to be a writer. But for 43 years, I have loved the law and being a trial lawyer. In the latter role, I am getting ready to teach Joe Biden a lesson he will never forget. He falsely accused a 17-year-old boy and prejudiced Kyle's legal rights. Lynn Wood is going to get a ton of money. All that money that, that, that Hunter got that probably made its way to Joe <laughs> is all about <laughs> to go to Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> Yeah, that was kind of a shocking tweet. I was surprised to yeah. see Kyle's picture on that tweet. All right, we've got to get to Hillary Clinton. By the way, I am named Hillary, minus with one L, so don't come at me. <laughs> um, Russian intelligence said Hillary Clinton approved a campaign plan to tie Trump to Russian election interference. This was revealed by a Trump Intel director. Um, Director of National Intelligence John Ratcliffe revealed that they learned of claims from Russian intelligence that she did approve the plan. Um, he made the admission in a letter to Senator Lindsey Graham on Tuesday. They said in late July 2016, U.S. intelligence agencies obtained insight into Russian intelligence analysis alleging that U.S. presidential candidate Hillary Clinton had approved a campaign plan to stir up a scandal against U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump by tying him to Russian President Vladimir Putin and Russians hacking of the Democratic National Committee. They said the IC doesn't know the accuracy of this allegation or the extent to which the Russian intelligence analysis may reflect exaggeration or fabrication. Um, they're saying uh, the CIA Director John Brennan briefed former President Barack Obama on the claims garnered from Russian intelligence. Those were then forwarded to James Comey, uh, Peter Strzok, so Graham told CBS News he would seek to have the notes declassified from the letter. And then a spokesperson for Hillary Clinton, they responded and told Politico the allegations were baseless. I will say BS, I won't say the full word. Uh, Democrats also slammed Ratcliffe and Graham for making the Russian assessment public. Um, it kind of seems like the details of this have come out so slowly that nobody's really surprised at this point. Do you think that was intentional? I, I think right now you have an active investigation by John Durham and a couple of other U.S. attorneys that are looking into how this all started. But let's go back to what we know about the Russia collusion hoax. We know that the Russian collusion hoax started with a firm called Perkins Boy, who was a DNC lawyer with money that was paid from the Hillary Clinton campaign to the DNC. Perkins Boy, the DNC's lawyer, hired a former spy in the United Kingdom to spy on another presidential candidate to come up with a dossier that the FBI said was completely and utterly unsubstantiated. Th that's what happened. We know that that's what happened. That's how this whole thing started. And they leaked it to news organizations so that they could start talking about it so then BuzzFeed could put out the whole thing. I mean, mm -hmm. this was 100% a Hillary Clinton campaign op. I've been saying it for four years. I'm glad that the director of national intelligence said it, and I'm glad that he didn't kill himself before he did. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, so Eric, do you think this is confirmation that the deep state really does exist? Well, I don't know if it's, uh, I would hope that people know that there's some some raggedy things going on behind the scenes, and this is this is the game of politics. Um, I think because we're more connected than we've ever been, considering social media and all the technology and stuff like that, it's very quick. Uh, well, stuff that I guess would, would be covered becomes more uncovered mm -hmm. more often, so so to speak. So that doesn't surprise me. None of this actually surprised me that there would be some coordinated attack by uh, a high-ranking government official to try to set another 
potential, you know, president or president, what have you, um, up for, for failure. That doesn't surprise me at all. I expect that. I think when it comes to America, however, they look at this and they're like, well, why? I don't know why they look to these institutions as if they are so just trustworthy and honest and and they don't do stuff like that under the table mm -hmm. and do low blows. They do that stuff all the time. They've been doing that stuff all the time. And that's sort of the game that they play. We're just seeing it come into fruition more often. And definitely when you have a guy like Trump, man, it, 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 he he kind of he, he's different. Right. And I think that's a lot, why a lot of people supported him his his first go around because he wasn't the typical guy. So it's like almost he was a nuke in the entire thing. So just by default of him being there, he doesn't even have to really say anything, though. He he he'll say a lot. But just because he is like an outsider in that regards. Yeah. They were going to pull all the stops that they possibly could. And it was almost like a nuke in, in, in that sort of system. So yeah. you're just seeing a lot of this coming to fruition. It's been really interesting. I'm sure this isn't the last we've heard of it. All right, we've got to go to break. We've got more to come. Stick around. My answer to the is the FBI corrupt. Just ask Whitey Bulger. No. <laughs> <Right. laughs> and Comey was running that office back in the well, it's normally the happiest place on earth, but right now I'm sad to say that it's not because Disney is going to be laying off 28,000 workers, citing COVID slowdown and California's unwillingness to lift restrictions. This was a bummer to hear. Uh, Josh DeMauro, the chair of Disney's Parks, made the announcement uh, today in a memo to employees obtained by CNBC in which he said the company has been forced to reduce the size of the team he said, as you can imagine, a decision of this magnitude is not easy. For the last several months, our management team has worked tirelessly to avoid having to separate anyone from the company. We've cut expenses. We've suspended capital projects. We've furloughed our cast members while still paying benefits. They said they've modified their operations to run as efficiently as possible, but they just can't responsibly stay fully staffed while operating at limited capacity. Um, he said that, you know, the impact of COVID-19 on their business, including limited capacity due to the physical distancing requirements and the continued uncertainty regarding the duration of the pandemic means they're going to have to lay off these people. Most of them are part time workers. Um, he declined to break down the layoffs by individual park locations, but he did seem to place some special blame on California for the company's losses as the state's pandemic policies have not allowed Disneyland or California Adventure in Anaheim to open in any capacity since March. And the majority of Disney's profit comes from its U.S. operations. So there are other parks in Florida, in Paris, Japan, Shanghai, Hong Kong. They've all been able to reopen at limited capacity since the start of the pandemic. But California is just n not lightening up. Rob, you were a big fan of Disney. Huge fan of Disney. Went there Christmas last year. <sighs> so, I mean, people look forward to this all year long. I mean, for some people, like, this is the highlight of their life. And it's just such a shame. What are your what are your thoughts on this? So it's Governor Gavin Newsom. There's no reason that Disney World can't be open. There's no reason that things in California cannot be open. It's ridiculous. It's vindictive. It's arbitrary. It's capricious. It's him trying to keep something going in Detroit economy, just like Donald Trump said on that stage last night. It's 100 percent true. All of these restrictions are going to be lifted on November 4th. 100 percent. I, I, I will go to my grave if I happen to go to my grave before then saying that. Let's hope not. Right, let's hope not. <laughs> but, you know, they're very morbid um, when I'm talking about the happiest place on earth. But um, it, it's absolutely unreal. Now, hopefully for Disney, um, they can reopen Florida a little bit more. Ron DeSantis just said that we're taking away all COVID restrictions. They're gone. You can do what you want. Now, if Disney continues to require masks, continue to do six foot distancing, continues to do all the things that they're doing to be under the former orders, going forward because their lawyers tell them to or whatever, right. then it's on them. Then what happens to them is on them. I mean, I would go back to Disney World or right today if I didn't have to wear a stupid mask. I'm not yeah. walking around outside right. for eight and a half hours in 95 degree heat. That's miserable. With a mask on. Yeah. I mean, I'm just not going to do it. But if I had the ability to go there with a mask, it's outside. Just like it's outside. You're outside. You're in outdoor things. Limit the capacity in the indoor things. You know, maybe you do that. Maybe you do the lines aren't that long. You get a number and you go and yep. it's your number like they do at the um, the ride. They have boarding groups for the big ride at, at Galaxy's Edge because they've had some problems with it. So you get a ticket. You're in that boarding group. That's when you get to go. Maybe they do that with a bunch of other rides because they know how to do it now. 
but there's no reason that they can't be open without masks. Limit the park capacity. I would go tomorrow. A lot of other people would go tomorrow. And the destruction of Disney is on Gavin Newsom. Well, yeah, I mean, it says 37% of the company's revenue comes from their parks and experiences and products. How long do you think it will take them to recover from this? Well, it's going to take a while for them. We know that it definitely smaller businesses as well um, all over the country are suffering because of this. And that's why I hate why so many people misspeak and they say, well, the virus did it. The virus did not do that. Your government did that. They're the ones that are shutting you down yeah. and uh, not allowing you to move around. It, or they more so make it illegal for you to do so in, in, in that capacity, or at least somewhat like you were before. And unfortunately, people's livelihoods are at stakes. It's not just the business owners. Unfortunately, people don't look at it like that. They look at, well, these the the big guys, which a lot of them had been benefiting. And I think what you're seeing now is, you know, when those initial stimulus, the initial stimulus package going, you got all those, even those rich folk were gobbling a lot of that money up. A lot of that stuff was being used to keep some of that, though, even those bigger businesses running. It was always going to come a time when if the restrictions were not lifted and the money ran dry, the well ran dry, big and small, they were all about to start to take a hit. And we're seeing more of that from not just the small businesses. It's happening to the big, big businesses, but it's not rich folk that generally work there. Like whether they're part time, full time, these are regular people who are now without a job. And it's completely an arbitrary reason as to why they can blame the virus all they want. But it's not for lack of people not wanting to assume whatever risk just to go have some fun, live their lives. It's it, it's because the government around them or wherever they're placed makes it illegal for them to operate. Right. Simple as that. Yeah. I mean, look, Char Charlie Baker in Massachusetts, I used to live in Massachusetts, which by I talk about Massachusetts, might get some people upset, but if you go to Massachusetts, they just allowed level three to happen. The second phase of level three, which allowed, you know, people to open up performance venues and stuff like that. But it's based on if you're, if your city's not in this like color coded red thing that they have, they have like a red, yellow, green, right? Now, Massachusetts, every square inch is incorporated, unlike most of the rest of the country. So, you know, towns are about eight square miles. So literally, you could live here. Mm -hmm. The performance venue could be where the camera guy is. You could be in a red place, which means your town can't have the performance venue, but you could walk next door and go to the performance venues in the other town. Arbitrary. It's completely stupid. <laughs> I know. And that's what they're all... If, if there was any rhyme or reason to any of these laws i mean you, you know our, our judge clay jenkins here in, oh in, in in dallas said that he was going to arrest me for driving somewhere other than my job or the grocery store like literally that's what they said they were going to do it's got to stop in my own car it's got to stop and you know what else has to stop this moment but we'll be right back <laughs> <laughs> oh, no it's so true I, so I feel much. so badly for all those people because i mean it's the majority of our part time But before we go, I want to get to our poll question from yesterday, give you the results from that. It was who will win tonight's debate, Donald Trump or Joe Biden? 93.9% .9 of you picked Donald Trump. I am not surprised by that at all. Uh, but I would love to know who lost last night's debate. This is our question for today. Trump, Biden, or America? Gentlemen, quickly give me your answer. America. America. I think a lot of people felt that way. <laughs> oh. Here's hoping the next two debates go a little bit better. They're thinking about making some changes. I don't know what they haven't released what those will be. Mute, but they are thinking about no making moderator. some changes. So, yeah. No moderator, them two just going at it. Charge pay-per-view. <laughs> I'm getting my popcorn and I'm watching. Getting Joe Rogan in there to moderate. You know? What do you think about that? I mean, he could be. He'd probably uh, do a better job than Chris Wallace. Than Chris Wallace. Absolutely. <laughs> he totally. Absolutely. You know, he's used to handling those egos. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, because that's really, it was a battle of egos the whole yeah. night long. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, America. We were all the losers. Cage. Yeah. Put a cage up. <laughs> Put a cage. Oh. But it was, you know. I mean, it wasn't a waste.